Hello and welcome to Model Kit Stuff and welcome to our Wooden Wednesday First Impressions and today we're focusing on this. It's a Viking ship from Billings Boats. So this is Billing Boats um, kit number BB703. I am not going to pronounce um, the name of the ship because I will only get it right, but we have a lovely picture on the front of the box of it. We have some dimensions there as well. Um, so it's a decent size uh, model when it's completed. And then there's a little bit of history on the front. And we have a couple of pictures of the built model. All looks very nice indeed. So this is um, a fairly standard Billing Boats um, box presentation for some of their more recent bo uh, boxed up kits. Um, you do have to be cautious though, some of their kits are getting on a bit and, and have been reboxed. Um, it tells us that we're going to get laser cut parts and as I look around the side we've got the same um, pictures from the top of the box a little bit more information and history the sides are the same and just tell you what the kit is and then on this end you have um, some uh, further information and it tells us that the kit is for the advanced beginner so let's have a look what's inside the box so despite the size of the box the contents amount to this and this bag with the instructions and some plans in. Um, so actually, it doesn't appear to be much to it. Let's have a look at the plans and instructions. So we'll start with our instructions. Um, and what we've got is an A4 stapled at the top set of sheets. Um, and the sheets are in... Um, different languages so we've got Danish and English appears to be the um, two languages being used so um, you could yeah oh and then we've got German and French so actually we've not got as many instructions as you might think um, so So it does say in the very first instruction that a building plate should be used, so a building board, um, and that'll be to mark off positions or, um, against the keel of some of your parts. So um, I have one of those, so we can uh, maybe show you one of those in a future video. Um, and then it takes you through building support, support frames, planks, um, uh, bracing process and so on so I imagine there are some drawings further down yeah this is the same instruction in many languages right okay so the instructions reference a figure number and then they talk about it in there so there seems to be eight steps to complete the whole model so cutting out what we saw in the plot in um, a plan so there must be some form of plan that we can cut out and use as a template. So um, you can then pin the template to the board and place your parts on here like so. So that's figure one. Figure two, that's putting in place the um, little supports which are not to be glued against. They're simply to um, have your, have your uh, the formers basically as you put your strips on, you're not going to keep those in the completed model. So that's basically how that works. It's just a quiet thing. And then it shows you pinning to each former the individual wood strips. And you see some of these are finishing early, and that's why it was so thin, to allow them to form together. 
So by pinning them and pegging them as, as they're done here, you can make sure you've got them positioned. You can probably mark them out with a pencil. Go back and put your glue on, having bent it into shape, uh, and then go back and glue it. So hopefully not too difficult a process, um, especially as this is all explained in the instructions. And then we can see that being built up. And it's a lovely shape, isn't it? It's a really nice shape. So then you should be able to lift it off and you've got this glued into place against your basic keel piece. Then as we turn the page, we're building up the stand um, and then we're building up the internal parts of the uh, boat. We've got all sorts of uh, ribs and things being made on the inside. Some of that will be coming from the strips. Some of it is the laser cut uh, material. Um, showing you how to tie a knot there. You can see our little brass pulley going into this uh, pulley block, which I'm guessing is that there, which we saw as the main control for the sail. Again, more how to tie the knots. Then we've got some internal side and profile drawings telling, showing you exactly how these should lie and where your strip should be in relation. So you can see that these would be battens that things would be nailed against. So basically the internal frame. And then we're making up some parts that go inside and it's showing referencing where they go. So that's really handy. A lot of studying of this come the time. Then we've got uh, the rudder being put together. So it's a single rudder, two pieces to get the right thickness. You're then gonna have to sand it into shape, round the, thin down the bottom and so on. You can see here, we're building that up. It needs to be carved to form a, a smooth dome. Um, so that's what that is showing you there. Um, has got lengths um, and everything, so that's handy. Um, and then it's showing us here how to um, put the rope work through into the rudder. So this is our rudder cross section, the side of the ship there. So great. And then we have our list of parts. So um, tells you how many pieces you've got, what the part number is, what the dimensions of it are, um, what the material is. Um, and then it tells you what it is. So uh, keel front from 2099L, that'll be the reference number on the laser cut sheet. You'll see that as we go through them. Um, yeah. Billings are recommending mahogany, their uh, mahogany stain for all of the wood on the ship. Our laser cut part list. So you can see that reference number we were just talking about. Then you've got a number on each one of the parts um, and we've got one two three four five pieces of wood there plus our strips so not an overly uh, huge model in terms of, of the material content but certainly a very pretty and lifelike boat when it's finished we will have to study the, under the uh, instructions to understand exactly what all of this means but it, it appears to be uh, positions um, of internal parts I would think by the looks of it um, and it's giving us some measurements there I guess that is the supporting frames um, we'll understand that better when we actually come to build it but um, it appears to be to scale so that's always really useful you can compare, compare it exactly and our other sheet does the same again so um, and like I say, you need to read the instructions to be able to understand it, but there's something there anyway. Yeah. One very large overall plan, which I guess is final fit and arrangements, uh, and it's basically just a large picture of the whole completed um, boat. So we can see our blocks, our rigging points, 
we can see um, the tie-off points on the sail um, and roughly how long they should be um, the uh, ropes there and how they're uh, managing it got some loops sewn in there for uh, tying it up so that's um, useful because I didn't see that on the plan for the sail um, and then we can see here how uh, the rudder is put together and our waterline is on there as well should we choose to use it for something so you get the total view of everything here and it's a good reference but there is no other um, instructions on here it's called the main drawing and it's basically a reference point but it is to scale so what you're seeing here is the full size of the ship which doesn't quite get into camera um, non laser cut wood amounts to one bundle of strip and dowel um, so we've got basically three dowels that all look to be similar you know that's a, a thinner one so that will be for your uh, those will be for your mast and that'll be um, I guess for the uh, yard arms um, and then we've got these and you can see they're quite rough uh, roughly sawn um, it's not the same quality of material as you get in some other kits um, you can see there's some splinters there but you know gently sanded into shape it will be okay you will have to dye all this um, to make it look um, something other than just basic wood uh, the bundle is taped together and I personally don't like that and I don't like that because if you keep this in your stash for a while the uh, tape starts to leave a witness um, on the wood um, so I prefer um, it to be held together by an elastic band or something like that that's not going to cause any problems so I am actually going to take this tape off now so that we stop that from happening you can also see you know it's damaging the wood as we take it off so it's not a great idea Billings boats right so that is our material, it's okay. And we have the same issue with tape on the material for um, the sail. So I'm gonna do the same thing here and remove the tape. There we go. So our sail is not pre-stitched in any shape or form. In fact, this one's fraying a little bit. Um, so you basically got a sheet of material um, and that gets marked out on the plans as we've seen um, and then you sew it into shape. The material's quite quite thin. Um, I think that looks all right as sail material. Um, so yeah, there's nothing wrong with that at all. Um, the colour's nice, so you probably don't need to dye it. If you wanted to, you could tea stain it a little bit or something like that. But for me, I'd be happy with that as it was. Now the um, base that's supplied has two plastic ends and then we're putting um, a wooden dowel through, through here to form our base. So you could use this as a display base, you could paint that up um, and, and you could do something with it to make it look quite nice. Um, it doesn't have ejector pin marks on the other side so um, it's quite presentable. Um, so if you didn't want to put it on pedestals and mount it um, that way, then you could use that. There is nothing wrong with it. It's a little crude, but painted up it'll look perfectly fine. Um, we do have a plastic grate in there. And for me, that one's swapping out with a wooden one personally, because um, you are going to have to paint that and do something with it. And if the rest of the model has all been wood and um, natural materials, that does detract from it a little bit if you're trying to leave everything natural. So we have a Ziploc bag and inside the Ziploc bag we have thread and we have a load of nails just loose in the bag and what looks like a brass pulley wheel. And yet again, we can see that this tape has been used to hold the um, 
cordage together and the problem with that is it will um, over time change the colour of it so I'm going to remove the tape there we go You can see there, there's some discoloration starting on the on the tape, and that will transfer itself to the material, especially with these brass nails in there. And we seem to have different sizes of nails. You can see they're shorter than that. So I'm going to empty all this out, and we'll put them in a little container and keep them separate. I think. So uh, they're quite good quality brass nails, but I think they might be plated, so they might actually be silver underneath, um, as in silver colour. And then we have a little brass pulley. So I like the fact that the two threads supplied are both quite natural looking, there's no tar or anything involved. Um, I think that'll add to the effect of the finished model once done. So I'm quite happy with those. So there you have it, the Billings Boat Viking ship. Uh, what are my first impressions? Well, okay, first thing to say is don't be deceived by the size of the box. Um, if you roll up the instructions and the plans, you'd get all of the contents of that box in about 25% of the space. Um, so um, you're not getting um, what you might be led to believe from the box size. Having said that, what you've got in there is not a bad kit at all. Now, Billings boats have been around for a long, long time. And they are not at the top quality end of uh, the model ship uh, world. But at the same time, they're also not at the top end when it comes to cost. Now, the fact that they are putting these in a, a lower a lower cost kit doesn't mean that you're getting a lower offering in terms of quality of materials particularly uh, what it means is you're getting a compromise so for example the um, the plastic stand is a bit of a compromise clearly cheaper for them to make than putting a, a wooden one in or putting turn turn brass pillars in or something like that now um, it, other model manufacturers would have put in um, a, a, a stand that's come from uh, some laser cut plywood and it wouldn't be as pretty as the plastic one for example. It's not uncommon for Billings to put plastic parts in their kits. So I have their um, HMS Warrior kit and there's some lovely brass in there, there's a brass casting of the figurehead which is absolutely stunning. Um, and there's uh, photo etch in there and there's uh, uh, brass tube for the funnels and all sorts of bits and pieces but you still get a plastic ship's boat um, and some uh, some other components as well so it's um, it's a way of them keeping the cost down rather than a way of cheapening the kit because if you're going to paint it it's not going to be seen anyway the other thing they're doing to reduce the cost is having you stain the wood, which means that you've then got the options on exactly how you want it to look. And that reduces the cost for them and for you. The downside is you're, you're using plywood, you'll see the edges of the plywood, particularly on the keel. So you might want to think about what you're going to do with that to, to um, make that look more presentable. But Everything you need to make a very nice looking authentic Viking longboat is right there um, in the kit. Uh, and the quality of the materials are all good. The, um, the strip and, and what have you, there's nothing wrong with them. They're just a bit rough cut and they need a little bit of a sand. So uh, you would get slightly better quality from, from some other manufacturers. Um, but there's nothing wrong with what you've got. And if the kit is what you're looking for, um, 
Billings boat will absolutely beat the price of anybody else. So I think my uh, highlights of this are we've got something particularly well thought through when it comes to putting the clinker together. Um, that looks like a really nice way of doing it. I have seen that done by other manufacturers. So um, there are other people that make Viking long ships. Some of them specialize in them um, and they're much bigger models than this. And they do the same thing with the shaped planks. So that's really helpful. Low light, uh, I saw a plastic grating, but I'm not actually sure that it's used. I didn't spot it in the instructions. Um, I think taping all the materials together um, is uh, a bit dangerous because of what happens over time with tape uh, and that could cause you some problems with your materials, especially as we're staining these and you can't just sand them smooth. Um, so uh, that's probably the biggest downsize, but otherwise, uh, unless the instructions are particularly enough, I think this is a nice little kit and I'm looking forward to building it at some point. I hope that was interesting and informative. Um, if you're interested in one of these, you now know what you get. Take care everyone, enjoy your modeling, and I will see you very soon.